Trains by Susan E. Goodman and Michael J. Doolittle with photographs, a step into reading three book. Trains. To Jeff Fine, who understands the beauty and mystery of train tracks, and to Brooks. All aboard, hop on a train. They are a great way to travel. New ones fly down the tracks. Old trains are fun too. They click clack on old tracks. They let you pretend you are living long ago. New or old, trains are an adventure. This train's name is the Jacobite. Mostly it takes people home or to work. It passes lakes, it passes bridges. Other times it's a movie star. It plays the Hogwarts Express. It takes Harry Potter and his friends to school. What's the best thing about riding a train? Sometimes it's what you see out of your window. This trip has great scenery. Sadly, there are no passengers to see it. The train is coming from a mine. It is carrying salt to a factory, but the crew can enjoy the view. That looks pretty cool. The best thing about a trip may be the train itself. Trains can be hotels in motion. You can rent your own room. It is very small, but you have everything you need. You can read, you can wash up, you can get a good night's sleep. The restaurant car serves meals all day long. Trains are an adventure. The age of the railroad. In 1829, George Stevenson built the first modern locomotive. He called it the rocket. It raced about 35 miles an hour. Its speed changed the world. Stagecoaches took four days to travel 150 miles. Trains took only four hours. The age of the railroad began. Soon trains were running all over the world. Early trains ran on steam power. Engines burned coal to boil water. The water turned to steam. The steam built up and pushed parts of the engine. These parts moved and turned the wheels. Here are the parts of a steam train. You can see the little arrows. There's the tender and the cab, the whistle and the throttle le lever, the steam dome and the steam pipe. There's also a water compartment, a coal bunker, a firebox, a boiler, a smokestack, a headlamp, and a coupler. By 1860, the Eastern United States had many railroads, but the country needed one to go from coast to coast. In 1863, work began in the West. Workers built bridges over rivers. They blasted through mountains. In 1869, two engines faced each other in Utah. One traveled from the East and the other from the West. One last rail would connect all the tracks Workers hammered it in with a spike of solid gold. Trains carried cargo and people. Some even carried queens. Queen Victoria of England had her own train. It was the first one to have a bathroom in it. Trains used steam power for a long time. Then the diesel engine took over. It burns oil to make electricity. The electricity drives the train. Diesels are cheaper to run than steam engines. They do not need as much repair. We still use diesel engines today, like this one here. Pulling weight, pulling freight. Freight trains carry huge loads. They can have over 200 cars. They can be two miles long. Long trains need more than one engine to pull them. Trains are great for hauling things. They use less fuel than trucks. They create less pollution. Trains crisscross the United States all day long. They haul almost half its cargo. They even carry trucks filled with freight. A truck reaches its stop, so you can see the truck's on the train. Then it drives off and delivers its goods. Freight trains stop in rail yards along their route. They pick up new cars. They leave other ones behind. Some cars get unloaded there. Some cars link with new trains to get to their last stop. Freight is often carried in big boxes called containers. They are lifted onto flat cars. Flat cars carry lots of cargo. 
They haul anything that can get wet if it rains or snows. Even tanks can hitch a ride. See the tanks? Cars are built to carry different cargo. Hopper cars are open and easy to unload. They work well for coal or sand. Tankers hold liquids. Some keep their cargo cold. This tanker is full of orange juice. See the Tropicana tanker? Box cars are closed, so they keep cargo clean and dry. You never know what could be inside. It could be an elephant. Trains in the city. Commuter trains take people to the city each morning. They bring them home at night. Double-deckers carry lots of passengers. They save lots of gas, too. See that double-decker? Train stations can be a city's hub. Commuter trains pull in. Some trains depart for faraway places. Others arrive all day and night. Travelers hop on trains that take them around the city. Subways are trains that travel underground. Subway use, subways use electricity to run. A rail next to the track supplies this power. Subways can get very crowded. In Japan, men called pushers help pack people in. Trolleys travel on city streets. Okay, so there's the pushers packing the people in. Um, they use electricity too. It comes from wires above them or underground. So there's an example of a trolley. Um, and then look up. Look at this one up in the air. A train could be overhead. Monorails do not use tracks. They run on just one rail. Rubber tires supply a quiet ride. And you get a great view. Want another great view? Ride a funicular railroad. Railway. It goes up and down steep hills. A funicular has two tracks. It is one car on each of them. They are joined by a cable. The cable pulls one car uphill as it pulls the other down. Oh, I can see it going up the side here. Fast and faster. Long ago, trains used to be the fastest way to travel. Now we have jets, but trains are moving faster too. Old tracks slow trains down. Some old tracks have curves. Trains must break when going around a curve. Some new trains still use these tracks. They just tilt while turning. They lean the way bicycles do. These trains can go up to 150 miles an hour. Most people in the United States fly or drive between cities. In other nations, people use trains instead. New tracks have been laid. The rails are straight, so their trains go much faster. Like this one here. Pointed high-speed trains are called bullet trains. Are they as fast as bullets? Not really, but they seem to fly. Some can go up to 220 miles an hour. TGV trains in France go fast too. One of them was the world's fastest train. It went 357 miles an hour. Maglev trains do not have wheels. Their tracks are different too. Magnets make the trains float above the rails. Trains gliding on air go fast. How fast? When maglev races 360 miles an hour. What else will new trains do? Some new trains will weigh less. A lighter train can save fuel. Using less fuel means less pollution. Some trains may have solar panels. The sun's energy will help them run. New trains will be different inside too. Look at this one. Big glass windows, seats with movies and games, private compartments. What a ride. The trains of the future. See those little private compartments? Will be amazing. Thank you for listening to Trains by Susan E. Goodman.